you guys welcome back to my channel my name is Megan if you didn't know now you know and it's that time again everybody's favorite time of the month mystery nail art challenge if you'll remember we're in season two and in season two we're picking nail polishes not nail art items and then we're figuring it out so let's get over to our spreadsheet so we have our number generator we've got up to 467 options now there are of course some exclusions because these are not nail polishes they are like top coats things like that so let's scroll on down and pick some numbers number 43 and number 449 let's check so 449 not even a far scroll back that is gonna be the Skin You're In from Color Club. It is a brown shade in a cream. It's a nude. I don't remember which one it is, but it is one. And our other number, number 43. That's a long ride back on the scrolling wheel. Strawberry Chillin' from China Glaze. It's a pink cream. I know this one. This is like a glittery, summertime, bright pink. Like Barbie with sparkle pink. So... <laughs> interesting selection for the time of the year that it is but we're gonna make it into something let me go get those okay I've collected my supplies so these are the tips that I have on uh, these are actually new I was trying them out they are the contoured super C curve tips from a prey it's really hard to find tips with this curve. Apparently, only 30% of the population has curved nail beds. Everybody else has got the flatties, and so nail tip brands cater to flatter nails, and those don't fit me. So, having to look for options. Now, these are fantastic. I absolutely love them. They're also pre-colored. I didn't paint these. This is the way they came, which I like because I feel like that's going to give it a more even base to start with. So I think that's pretty neat. I do wish there were alternatives in a more affordable brand because they're kind of pricey, but they're really nice. So here are the colors, as I was telling you about the skin you're in and strawberry chillin'. So this is what we got. I think what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna do a bit of like a sweater nail. If you're not familiar with what sweater nails are, it is nails that look like sweater pattern and you use transparent acrylic powder to pour onto the wet paint so that it makes it 3D. You can do this with gel and stick it in the lamp and cure or you can do it with regular polish and wait for it to dry. However, I can tell you the texture that you get with regular polish is going to be more smooth than the texture you get with gel. So first what we need, as usual, a base coat. It's Orly Bonder. If you guys haven't seen my little short where I did a test about base coats and poly gel, Orly Bonder was one of the featured base coats on there. Since I am allergic to gel, which you will know if you saw my patch test video, I am not able to safely trust gel base coat to put on poly gel for whatever reason didn't come back allergic to poly gel but just gel polish so I was like what can I use for an alternative and so I tried out a few different regular nail polish base coats I did this one and I did a strong adhesion from China Glaze and then also a long wear base coat from Nina Ultra Pro which is a super affordable Sally's brand and it all actually worked really well. Way better than expected. That poly gel was stuck. So I think that is going to be a fair and reasonable alternative. I have not done a set yet on my hands with it to check the longevity, but it's an interesting thing. We'll give that a moment to dry. Okay, so first we're gonna go in with the color club. The skin you're in, I got this in my $1 nail polish mystery haul. There's a video for that, and if I remember, I'll link it. So we are going to paint a couple of these solid and then a couple of them French. Definitely going to need two coats. That's a pretty color though. I think it's going to darken up with the second coat though. 
This one's going to be one of our Frenches. We definitely want to work our way across from outside to inside so we don't stick our fingers in our wet paint. And then we're going to jump in with the China Glaze. Strawberry chilling. This middle one is also going to be a French. And then we'll do us a solid pink on this one. That's such a pretty shade. And then back to brown over here. Yeah, that one's quite streaky. Definitely you'll need that second coat. But let's start back over here because this one has had time to dry. What a beautiful shade. Now we gotta do our second coat on this French. The great thing about having this pre-colored nail tip is I don't have to paint this part. It's just already the shade that it needed to be. Beautiful. So now we're gonna let these dry a little bit and then we'll come in and top coat them. All right, those have had a moment to dry. We're gonna go in with China Glaze Fast Forward Quick Drying Top Coat. You know, it's my favorite. We wanna get a good seal on the paint job we've already done before we go in with art. All right, now we let that dry. Okay, so these are dry. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna start our design. So I'm gonna put these two on crossover so we'll have pink stitches on this one and brown stitches on this one. These will match their colors and this one will match its colors. But let's start over here. So you want to go in with a super tiny liner brush and then the color that you want to use, you can put it in a base coat or top coat, but then I find it makes the transparent acrylic powder also transparent which is not the look I would prefer and then you want like a scooper of some kind so I'm gonna scoop this over here so that I am less likely to bang into it with this hand while I'm moving it around and I'm gonna pour into here so let's start by getting us some polish out I don't know where I am on this face cam so pardon me if it's really a mess. All right, so we get us some, and then we wanna make our lines kind of thick so that the acrylic has something to settle into. And you don't have to do a bunch either. You can work at it in sections. I'm so shaky and I don't know why I'm like this. It doesn't help with making straight lines. So we've got that on there. So let's take us a scoop and tap that off into it. So then we give that a moment to settle and soak in and we can do us a little bing 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 and then you can put some more if you want if you feel like it needs a little bit more because it does tend to soak it up and bing 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 and then you want to go in and put more designs that's totally fine you don't need to wipe this off because if there is acrylic under the paint it's still gonna soak up so it's like whatever and so I want to say maybe I want to go in and put some, maybe like some dots. Maybe I'll get a dotting tool. That's what I'll do. These dots are not very big. All right, so let me put a little bit of acrylic in those. And then tap it off. And then I want to do some on the other side as well. I turn my hand over so I can see. Try and get about four of them over here as well. And then we are going to go in and kind of connect our little lines here. So like with sweaters, sometimes these stitches come together. All right, and then we'll want to put some on that. Okay, now we're gonna give this a while to dry before we go to swiping it off. You just pour this back in here. Now let's work on this one. So let's get out some brown paint. 
So on this one, I think I'm gonna try and do some lines like this. Your, spot, your sweater patterns don't have to be the same on every finger or at all. You can do whatever patterns you like. That one kind of went off the edge a little bit. Hmm, well, it is what it is. Get us a little scope. Tap, 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 tap. One of the hard things about drawing on a shade with the same shade is you can't hardly see the drawing. It's a little uneven, and that one's got some like white caked in it, but that's okay. And so I could, in theory, go over all these with a second layer, but I don't want to. Now let's go on this one. So this one, what I think I'm gonna do is kinda like, maybe I'll try and do some little hearts. Sorry, my battery died, but we've got it swapped out. Let's work on this nail. I almost forgot this was gonna be a crossover one, so we're doing the brown stitches on this one. And we're gonna try and do another, like, sweater pattern like the other one. Oop, that one's a little long. All right, we gotta put some powder in these lines. I don't have the same amount of lines on this side as I have on the other, but that's because it's hard. <laughs> that's okay though, it's still cute. So I'm going to give these a moment to dry before I go in and do this one because the way I hold my hand, I don't want to mess these up. Alright, so let's get started on this guy. Let me back this up a little bit. We're going to do brown on this one. And I think what we're going to try and do is this sweater pattern that's kind of like braided looking. I think I might be putting these too close together, but I don't know, and I'm only going to be able to do one line at a time, otherwise it's going to dry. Let's give that a second to absorb. Boy, that might be too much polish that it's trying to hold. Hopefully that'll come off because my other ones that had white kind of hanging on it, it's mostly soaked up, but when I dust these, maybe it'll turn clear. Hopefully. Let's go in with another line of these. Now it's suddenly got bigger gaps. My consistency is questionable. This side. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I've given that a moment. I've got me a fluffy brush. Let's do a bit of a dust. Gently, because you don't want to mess up any polish that may not be thoroughly set yet. Generally with regular polish, you do want to make sure that you're careful with it for at least the first day, because it is still soft and susceptible to denting or smudging or any of that nonsense. Ah, there we go. Yeah, that extra white came flying off. All right, so for this one, these ones where I put it close together, it is too close together. I don't really prefer the way that looks. But over here where there's a bit of a gap, it's better. But this is what I got. So I think it's actually pretty cute. These two are probably my favorite because they came out the best. Can you see my hearts? Can you tell that they're hearts? It is hard to look at them. Maybe you'll be able to see them better in the photos. But I am going to get you some, as per the usual, outside, maybe with a couple of different backgrounds or lighting angles. Let me know what you think. Do you think these are cute? Have you ever done sweater nails? And if so, did you do it with gel or with regular polish? And if you did with regular polish, how did you find it? Was it easy enough? If you haven't done this, is it something that you want to try? Let me know. I am really interested. I, I don't get to do this type of nail art very often, but I do enjoy it when I do it. Please make sure you are subscribed so you're not missing my videos. And also make sure that you are hitting that like button. It helps the algorithm and it helps me. It helps my channel grow and I appreciate it. And definitely leave me comments. I love to talk to you guys. Let me know what you think. 
Let me know if you think that this was a good use of my mystery nail art items or if you would have done something different, what? What would you have done? Pink and brown go together really well. This could have been applicable in several ways, but I thought this would be a fun time to do it this way. Um, definitely stay tuned. It is October, so we do have fun stuff coming up this month, and I'm afraid I'm not going to have time to do everything I want, but I'm going to try. So, be here or be square. Haha. <laughs> Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.